Aujourd'hui, we're going to be learning French with the help of TV show 10%, specifically saison 1, episode 2. I come up with what I think is a great list of useful everyday expressions and grammar to help you become a more confident French speaker. Alors, si vous êtes prêts, allez, c'est parti. Salut tout le monde, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, bienvenue. Je m'appelle Alex. I'm an English guy living in the sunny south of France. And here on the channel, I help you become a more confident French speaker through videos such as today's where we're breaking down the French language used in a TV show. 10% is the choice of today. So without further ado, let's dive in to the first clip. Andrea. Samuel est mort, je, je viens de perdre un ami très cher. Je sais, Françoise, vous savez, moi aussi. Mais j'ai perdu aussi mon agent. Je comprends très bien. Et évidemment, je suis tout à fait disposée à prendre la relève. Oui, oui. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to today is the expression tout à fait. Tout à fait, which can mean either absolutely, completely, or exactly. Here, Andrea is using it to mean something like absolutely or completely or even totally. She says, je suis tout à fait disposé de prendre la relève because uh, Françoise has lost her agent and dear friend and Andrea has lost her boss and dear friend. And she's saying, I will step in and take you on as a client. Je suis tout à fait disposé. She wants to look really good and assertive in front of Françoise. So she emphasizes it with tout à fait. Now I might be thinking, why am I pronouncing the T there at the end of tout? Because in the phrase tout le monde, which means everyone, you don't pronounce the T. Well, this is because the next letter after the T is a vowel and that creates the liaison between the T and the A and therefore to make it a smoother phrase you say tout à fait, tout à fait. Now this expression can also be heard in things like vous avez tout à fait raison, vous avez tout à fait raison, that's how you say you are absolutely right, you're completely right, etc. In French avoir raison, but you can emphasize it more by adding tout à fait in the middle there. Similarly uh, with je suis tout à fait d'accord. Je suis tout à fait d'accord, which means I absolutely agree. I completely agree. I totally agree. Je suis d'accord. I agree. Je suis tout à fait d'accord. So have a watch again and then we'll move on to the next clip. Andrea, Samuel est mort. Je, je viens de perdre un ami très cher. Je sais, Françoise. Vous savez, moi aussi. Mais j'ai perdu aussi mon agent. Je comprends très bien. Et évidemment, je suis tout à fait disposé à prendre la relève. Oui, oui. So the second thing I want to talk to you about is that infamous subjunctive in French. It's quite scary, it's quite intimidating at times, and it's quite complicated. So in the next part of this scene, there are four uses of uh, the subjunctive to, to analyze and to make it easier for uh, you to digest. I'm going to talk about the reasons behind why they have decided to employ the subjunctive in these four cases. So have a watch. I'll put a number on screen to show you when each one is there to look out for, and then we'll dive into them. Merci, Françoise. Um, on peut peut-être décaler un peu le tournage, uh, si vous voulez, que vous ayez le temps de vous reposer. Mais c'est un film très sombre. J'ai besoin d'optimisme. Françoise, pensez à Samuel, justement. Qu'est-ce qu'il aurait voulu, lui Que vous soyez forte. Que la vie continue. J'ai envie de voir ma fille, de voyager. Il faut que je suis mon instinct. Samuel l'aurait compris, lui. Well, how did you do with following that? Don't worry, we're going to play it bit by bit. But there were, I assure you, four uses of the subjunctive here. So the first use of the subjunctive here is when Andrea says, On peut peut-être décaler le tournage, si vous voulez. Que vous ayez le temps de vous reposer. Que vous ayez le temps de vous reposer. Now the subjunctive here is when she says, Ayez, que vous ayez. This is the subjunctive conjugation for avoir or to have. Now, one reason why we use subjunctive is when we're talking about something being done or something happening so that something else can happen. And we talk about this as being a but in French or a goal, doing something for a goal to be realized right here. That's why you can think of this as so that. So here, the so that is in the form of que, que. On peut décaler le tournage, we can delay the filming que vous ayez le temps, blah, blah, so that you have the time. Now, I like to think here of que as an abbreviation for pour que, pour que, or it's more formal form, afin que. And this is because que has many uses in French, and so it's easier for me to think of this as pour que, just abbreviated for, 
for brevity, right? But that's basically the first use of the subjunctive here, and it's because we're talking about a goal, something happening in order for something else to happen. The second and third uses I'm going to twin together because they're being employed for the same reason. Not that they're expressing a goal, but they are expressing a desire. She says, pense à Samuel. So think about what he would want. She says, qu'est-ce qu'il aurait voulu? Qu'est-ce qu'il aurait voulu? What would he have wanted? So when we talk about wanting something, we're expressing a desire. And this is a key that the subjunctive is not far away if you employ que. So she says, qu'est-ce qu'il aurait voulu? And then she says, que vous soyez forte et que la vie continue. Now again, this que is an abbreviation because she's already used the full phrase in the question. Qu'est-ce qu'il aurait voulu? So you could say she's saying, il aurait voulu que vous soyez forte et que la vie continue. Soyez here is the present tense of être in the subjunctive, so to be. So he'd want you to be strong and continue, although it looks just like the regular present tense of uh, il uh, continue or la vie continue. The subjunctive actually shares the conjugation here with this verb. So que vous soyez forte et que la vie continue are two uses of the subjunctive. In this occasion, they're being used to express a desire, what Samuel would have wanted. And numéro 4 is when Françoise says, Il faut que je suive mon instinct. Il faut que je suive mon instinct. Samuel l'aurait compris, lui. Now, a lot of you will be very familiar with il faut que. It's an extremely uh, common phrase in French. It doesn't easily translate to English at all. But I've done a video on it and I'll put that up in the top right hand corner of the video. But essentially, this is expressing obligation or necessity. And this is another reason, another popular reason why we use the subjunctive in French. So if you see a phrase which suggests that it's talking about an obligation and it's followed by que, it's likely that the verb that follows the que is in the subjunctive. So il faut que je suive mon instinct. This is the verb suivre or to follow in the regular present tense or the indicative present tense. If we want to get all grammatical, we would say je suis. Mon instinct. Je suis mon instinct. But in subjunctive, it's je suive. Que je suive. So if you are intimidated by the subjunctive, I completely understand. But what you can do is learn the different reasons behind using it and then the phrases which express those reasons, like desires, like goals, like obligation, become a bit more easy to manage. Non, mais c'est fou de finir tous les jours après 22 heures. Attends, ça fait à peine 10 jours que je suis là, je suis complètement cramé. Je sais pas comment vous faites pour avoir une vie. So the next point is much lighter than the beast that is the subjunctive and it is one of the many ways that I've learned the French have to say tired or really tired and a lot of them seem to begin with C. Camille here gave me a new one in saying je suis complètement cramé, je suis complètement cramé. Now cramé I've heard to talk about something that's in a pan, you know you're frying some food and if you burn that food you say that it's cramé, it's burned. And here she uses it to say that I'm tired. Je suis complètement cramé. Some of the other ways I've heard that you can say tired or extremely tired in French, usually it's when you're extremely tired, you say one of these. You talk about being claqué, you talk about being crevé, you talk about being cuit, you talk about being mort, you talk about being épuisé, you talk about being au bout du rouleau, just to name a few. The French have a lot of different ways of saying I'm really tired. If you can't remember all of those, just say something simple like très fatigué or fatigué. Because usually if you're tired, that's when your memory goes to pot. So you just need to remember the simplest word. But I thought this was interesting because they have a lot of different ways to say very tired. <laughs> Du coup, il va se passer quoi maintenant que ton patron Je sais pas. On attend des nouvelles du notaire pour savoir ce que Samuel a prévu pour l'agence. Et évite de me tutoyer si tu veux bien. Non, ça va, il n'y a personne là. Camille. Now, you being a French learner, I'm sure you've come across the fact now that you can either use tu or vous to say you in French. We do not have this concept in English, right? But it's very, very important to learn them in French. And I know that it causes a lot of confusion among us French learners to know when to use which, right? It can become a bit of a minefield. 
But what I want to draw your attention to right now is how Matthias says, Evite de me tutoyer. Evite de me tutoyer. Now, did you know that there's actually specific verbs which actually mean the use of to or vous with someone? Here it says, Evite de me tutoyer. And the verb tutoyer literally means like use to with the person. So tutoyer quelqu'un means to use to with someone. Equally, you can also say vous voyez quelqu'un. Vous voyez quelqu'un is to use vous with someone. So he says evite de me tutoyer. He says avoid or stop using to here with me at the office. And I remember when I learned this, I was kind of blown away, but it's really obvious because what if you want to ask someone who up to now you use vous with, you want to ask them if it's okay, you switch to the more informal too, so you can be a bit more relaxed around them, right? You can ask the question, est-ce qu'on peut se tutoyer? Est-ce qu'on peut se tutoyer? Or something like, est-ce que ça vous dérange qu'on se tutoie? Est-ce que ça vous dérange qu'on se tutoie? Or, est-ce que je peux vous tutoyer? Est-ce que je peux vous tutoyer? And if they say yes, then suddenly you can switch to using to and all the associated pronouns with them. Now I know that tu and vous in French is a bit of a minefield, which is an absolute understatement for us French learners. But the golden rule is, if you don't feel sure that you can safely use tu with someone, then you have two options. Either continue to use vous, or use one of the questions I had just put up on the screen to ask the person if it's okay to go with tu. Et évite de me tutoyer si tu veux bien. Non, ça va, y a personne là. Camille. Y a pas que des bonnes nouvelles. Arditi s'en va. Il dit qu'ici sans Samuel, ça tiendra pas six mois. Quand est-ce que t'as appris ça Il m'a appelé hier. Du coup, je l'ai invité à la poule d'or avec grand cru à 250 euros la bouteille, rien à faire. Now, Arlette is probably the character I find the hardest to follow when she's speaking, so I usually need the subtitles. But here, she's talking about how a client is threatening to leave, or he's basically committed to leaving the agency. And so she tried to bribe him or to convince him to stay with uh, all sorts of things. And she says, rien à faire. Du coup, je l'ai invité à la poule d'or avec grand cru à 250 euros la bouteille, rien à faire. Rien à faire, which is an expression which basically means in English, nothing doing. Uh, it didn't work. It's a no-go. So here she's saying, I tried to convince him to stay. It didn't work. Rien à faire. And this is an abbreviation for il n'y a rien à faire. Il n'y a rien à faire, commonly heard just as rien à faire. C'est Camille, c'est ça, la nouvelle assistante d'Andrea Ouais. Ok. Et toi, tu travailles ici Je t'ai jamais vu. Non, je suis, euh... enfin, je suis comédien. Bah, tu m'as pas vu dans les fichiers d'Andrea, c'est elle qui me représente. Hippolyte Rivière. Hippolyte Rivière, si, si, tout à fait. Vous avez rendez-vous <laughs> so there's a couple of things to talk about here. The first one is that Camille, she thought that Hippolyte is roughly her age. She thought he was working there. So she immediately starts talking to him with, with two. She's never spoken to him before, but she made an assumption using two. He was using two with her. So il se tutoyait. But then once she finds out he's actually an actor, therefore he, uh, they represent him, they work for him, she, her face, dropped her smile, changed to a very serious, almost disappointed face. And then uh, she starts to vous voir him. She's, elle commence à vous voyez, Hippolyte. Uh, non, mais j'ai bien fait de passer. Qu'est-ce que je peux faire pour vous? Elle a déjà commencé par me retutoyer, puis, uh, je sais pas, venir boire un café avec moi sur la terrasse. Then she says, qu'est-ce que je peux faire pour vous? And he says uh, something like, tu peux commencer par me retutoyer. Me re -tutoyer. So here he's asking her to go back to using to by adding re to the beginning of the verb tutoyer. So just like in English, you can say redo something to either repeat it or to go back to something. So re -tutoyer. So that's quite cool. So now you've learned tutoyer, vous voyez, and re -tutoyer. And I imagine you can say re vous voyez as well. And Camille also says, if you were listening closely, tout à fait, which is the expression we saw close to the beginning of the episode. Et évidemment, je suis tout à fait disposée à prendre la relève. Oui, oui. Hippolyte Rivière, si, si, tout à fait. Vous avez rendez-vous euh, Non, mais j'ai bien fait de passer. Et toi Eh ben, moi aussi, j'ai fait mes comptes. 
Et je me suis dit que le pognon que j'ai, autant que je le donne à cette agence. So here, the thing I want to look at is the expression autant que. Autant que. Now you may be familiar with this as a way to compare quantities of something. So for example, you can say, moi je gagne autant que toi. Moi je gagne autant que toi. We're going to talk about money. So I earn as much as you. So autant que can mean as much as. But here, she uses it in a different way. It means might as well, or it's probably best that, or may as well. So she's talking about doing her accounts, and she's decided that with the money that I have, autant que je le donne à cette agence. Autant que je le donne à cette agence. So I might as well give it to this agency. I might as well give it to the the company. This is another use of autant que that I would like to start integrating more in my everyday life. So I wanted to bring it up for you guys in case you can start using it before me. Autant que je le donne à cette agence. Je resterai donc propriétaire de 17% des parts. Oui. Nous avons pensé que vous apprécierez cette rente en mémoire de Samuel. Vous n'aurez à vous occuper de rien, vous toucherez juste les bénéfices. Vous pensez à ma retraite, c'est gentil. Now, this is an interesting use of the verb toucher. Toucher, now you might look at that and think, oh, that means to touch. And it does. To sort of physically touch something, you can use toucher or toucher à, as I mentioned in my video last week on the trailer of Lupin, season one, episode two. But here, it's actually meaning something else. Many verbs have uh, several meanings, and this is one of them. So here, it actually talks about earning money or receiving money. Typically, I would hear it when talking about a salary. So you can say, je touche un salaire de, and then you give the amount, or je touche, and then directly give the amount. Here he says, vous toucherez juste les bénéfices, and les bénéfices means the profits. They're talking about how she will be able to receive money every month from the business without having to do any work. Vous toucherez juste les bénéfices. You will just get the profits. There's not an easy translation for that, but you get what I mean, receiving money, obtaining money, uh, earning money. But in this case, she's not really earning it because she's not doing anything for it. She's just owning a stake in the business. Voilà, voilà. That is everything I have for you today in our analysis of 10% or Call My Agent, season one, episode two. What did you think of my choices? What did you find most useful today. Is it the subjunctive? Does it seem a little bit easier, a little bit less intimidating? Or is it I'll talk about tu and vous? Or maybe it's just some of the friendly, fun expressions that are brought up. Let me know dans les commentaires ci-dessous. If you didn't know already, there is a brand new Patreon page that I've set up where you can support my work here on the channel for as little as 99 cents per month. You can check that out. A link is down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to leave a like down below. It really helps me spread the videos to more people. But until next time, merci beaucoup d'avoir regardé. À la prochaine. Ciao.